Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2022. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we are going to be covering 2 Chronicles 32 through 33 and John 18, 19 through 40. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation and a smooth reading of your Word so that it may be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, Amen. Shinacherib threatens Jerusalem, Second Chronicles 32. After all that Hezekiah had so faithfully done, Shinacherib, king of Assyria, came and invaded Judea. He laid siege to the fortified cities, thinking to conquer them for himself. When Hezekiah saw that Shinnacherib had come and that he intended to wage war against Jerusalem, he consulted with his officials and military staff about blocking off the waters from the springs outside the city, and they helped him. They gathered a large group of people who blocked off all the springs and the streams that flowed through the land. Why should the kings of Assyria come and find plenty of water, they said. Then he worked hard repairing all the broken sections of the wall and building towers on it. He built another wall outside that one and reinforced the terraces of the city of David. He also made large numbers of weapons and shields. He appointed military officers over the people and assembled them before him in the square at the city gate and encourage them with these words be strong and courageous do not be afraid or discouraged because of the king of Assyria and the vast army with him for there is a greater power with us than with him when he with him is only the arm of flesh but with us is the Lord our God to help us and fight our battles. And the people gained confidence from what Hezekiah the king of Judea said. Later, when Shinnacherib king of Azariah and all his forces were lying siege to Leshish, he sent his officers to Jerusalem with this message for Hezekiah king of Judea and for all the people of Judea who were there. This is what Shinnacherib king of Assyria says. On what are you basing your confidence that you remain in Jerusalem under siege? When Hezekiah says, the Lord our God will save us from the hand of the king of Azariah, he is misleading you to let you die for of hunger and thirst. Did not Hezekiah himself remove this God's high places and altars, saying to Judea and Jerusalem, You must worship before one altar and burn sacrifices on it? Do you not know what I and my predecessors have done to all the people of other lands where the God's of those nations over uh, every able to deliver their land from my hand? Who of all the gods of these nations that my predecessors destroyed has been able to save his people from me? How then can you and your God deliver you from my hand? Now do not let Hezekiah deceive you and mislead you like this. Do not believe him, for no god of any nation or kingdom has been able to deliver his people from my hand or the hand of my predecessors. How much less with will your god deliver you from my hand? Sennacherib's officers spoke further against the Lord God and against his servant Hezekiah. And the king also wrote in letters ridiculing the Lord 
the God of Israel, and saying this against him, just as the gods of the peoples of the other lands did not rescue their people from my hand, so the God of Hezekiah will not rescue his people from my hand. Then they called out in Hebrew to the people of Jerusalem who were on the walls to terrify them and make them afraid in order to capture the city. They spoke about the God of Jerusalem as they did about the gods of the other peoples of the world. The work of human hands. King Hezekiah and the prophets Isaiah, son of Amos, cried out in prayer to heaven about this. And the Lord sent an angel who annihilated all the fighting men and the commanders and the officers in the camp of the Assyrian king. And so he withdrew his own land in disgrace. And when he went into the temple of his God, some of his sons, his own flesh and blood, cut him down with the sword. And so the Lord saved Hezekiah and the people of Jerusalem from the hand of Shinnacherib, king of Azariah, and from the hand of all others. He took care of them on every side. Many brought offerings to Jerusalem for the Lord and valuable gifts for Hezekiah, king of Judea. From then on, he was highly regarded by all the nations. Hezekiah's pride, success, and death. In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. He prayed to the Lord, who answered him, and gave him a miraculous sign. But Hezekiah's heart was proud, and he did not respond to the kindness shown to him. Therefore, the Lord's wrath was on him and on Judea and Jerusalem. And then Hezekiah repented of the pride of his heart, and did the people of Jerusalem as as did the people of Jerusalem, and therefore the Lord's wrath did not come on them during the days of Hezekiah. Hezekiah had very great wealth and honor, and he made treasuries for of silver and gold, and for his precious stones, spices, shields, and all kinds of valuables. He also made buildings to store the harvest of grain, the new wine, and olive oil. And he made stalls for various kinds of cattle and pens for the flocks. He built villages and acquired great numbers of flocks and herds, for God had given him very great riches. It was Hezekiah who blocked the upper outlet of the Gihon Spring and channeled the water down to the west side of the city of David. He succeeded in everything he undertook, but when envoys were sent by the rulers of Babylon to ask him about the miraculous signs that had occurred in the land, God left him to test him and to know everything that was in his heart. The other events of Hezekiah's reign and his acts of devotion are written in the visions of the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, in the book of the kings of Judea and Israel. Hezekiah rested with his ancestors and was buried on the hill where the tombs of David's descendants are. All Judea and the people of Jerusalem's honor honored him, and when he died, and Manash, his son, succeeded him. Manash, king of Judea, Second Chronicles 33. Manash was twelve years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem fifty-five years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, following the detestable practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. 
He rebuilt the high places that his father Hezekiah had demolished. He also erected altars to the ballast and made Asher poles. He bowed down to all the starry hosts and worshipped them. He built altars to the temple of the Lord of which the Lord had said, My name will remain in Jerusalem forever, in both courts of the temple of the Lord. He built altars to all the starry hosts. He sacrificed his children in the fire in the valley of ben Hinnom. He practiced the divination and witchcraft, sought omens, and consulted mediums and spiritualists. He did much evil in the eyes of the Lord, arousing his anger. He, ju- he took the image uh, that he had made, and he put it in God's house, in his temple, of which God had said to David and his son Solomon, in this temple and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. I will not again make the feet of the Israelites leave the land I assigned to your ancestors. If only they will be careful careful to do everything I command them concerning all the laws, decrees, and regulations given through Moses. But Manash led Judea and the people of Jerusalem astray. And so that day they did more evil than the nations the Lord had destroyed before the Israelites. The Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, by, uh, but they paid him no attention. And so the Lord brought against them the army commanders of the kings of Azariah, who took Manasseh prisoner, put a hook in his nose, bound him with the bronze shackles and took him to Babylon. In his distress he sought the favor of the Lord his God and he humbled himself greatly before the God of his ancestors. And when he prayed to him the Lord was moved by his entreaty and listened to his plea. So he brought him back to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. And then Manasseh knew that the Lord is God. Afterward, he rebuilt the outer wall of the city of David, west of the Gahan spring in the valley, as far as the entrance of the fish gate, and encircling the hill of Ophel. He also made it much higher. He stationed military commanders in all the fortified cities in Judea. He got rid of the foreign gods and removed the images from the temple of the Lord as as, as well as all the altars that he had built in the temple, in the hills, and in Jerusalem. And he threw them out of the city. Then he restored the altar of the Lord and sacrificed fellowship offerings and thank offerings on it and told Judea to serve the Lord, the God of Israel. The people, however, continued to sacrifice at the high places, but only to the Lord their God. The other events of Manasseh's reign, including his prayer to God, and the words the seers spoke to him in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel, are written in the annuals of the kings of Israel his prayers, and how God was moved by his interity, as well as all the sins and unfaithfulness and the sites where he had built high places and set up asher poles and idols before he humbled himself. All these are written in the records of the seers. Manesh rested with his ancestors and was buried in his palace and Ammon his son succeeded him as king Ammon king of Judea Ammon was 22 years old when he became king 
and he reigned in Jerusalem two years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord as his father Manasseh had done. Ammon worshipped and offered sacrifices to all the idols Manasseh had made. But unlike his father, Manasseh, he did not humble himself before the Lord. Ammon increased his guilt. Ammon's officials conspired against him and assassinated him in his palace. Then the people of the land killed all who had plotted against King Ammon, and they made Josiah, his son, king in his place. That was Second Chronicles 32 uh, through 33. And now we will be turning to John 18, 19. John 18, 19. The high priests questioned Jesus. Meanwhile, the high priests questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues of, uh, or at the temples where all the Jews came together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. And when Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priests? He demanded. If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what it is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Anasus sent him bound and uh, to Siphius the high priest. Peter's second and third denials. Meanwhile Simon Peter was still standing there warming himself and so they asked him you aren't one of his disciples too are you? He denied it saying I am not. One of the, the high priest's servants a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the garden? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, a rooster began to crow. And just before Pilate, now Jesus is before Pilate, then the Jews and leaders um, took Jesus from Cephas to the palace of the Roman governor, by now it was early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanliness, they did not enter the palace because they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. And so Pilate came out to them and he asked, What charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, he would not have handed him, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, they objected. This took place to fulfill that what Jesus had said about the kind of death he was going to die. Pilate then went out uh, back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and he asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea? Jesus asked. Or did others talk to you about me? I am a Jew, Pilate replied. Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is far from here. It's in another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is the truth? retorted Pilate. 
With this, he went out again to the Jews, gathered there, and he said, I find no bias for a charge against him, but it is your customs for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, No, not him. Give us Barbabas. Now Barbabas had been taken part in an uprising. And that was John 18 through 19, and I mean 18, 19 through 40. John 18, 19 through 40, which concludes the Bible with Briscoe 2022 for today. Now, tomorrow we are going to be covering Second Chronicles 34 through 36 and John 19, 1 through 22. So do not forget to tune in to the Bible with Briscoe 2022 for your daily reading of the Bible. This here has been Shenandoah. Oh, Father, I just thank you for your word, because without your word, I would not be able to be your messenger of the word. I give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. I'd like to thank you folks for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe 2022 for your daily reading of the Bible. This here has been Shenandoah Briscoe saying, uh, um, as always saying, you know God loves you, and so do I, so come back and see us tomorrow, because, well, we'll be here, and God willing, we hope that you will, too. Bye-bye.